Welcome back to another episode of the RAG Report podcast, where I bring you a daily bulletin show from recruitment owners, suppliers, and advisors around the world who are prepared to give their take on how we're all coping with COVID-19 and how we're going to come out of this as a recruitment industry stronger. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Belinda Agnew, the managing partner of Focus Group, a tech sales and digital recruitment agency headquartered in Melbourne, Australia. Belinda is someone I've spoken to on many occasions. She builds uh, a lot of content. She's got a really strong brand, um, very positive in her approach from what I've seen online. Lots of, lots of good messages for people to follow. So I thought you'd be a really good person to speak to today. So thanks for taking the time out of your evening in Australia. Absolutely. Any time to help recruitment fellow partners. <laughs> so, Linda, we'll get on to it. I mean, they've got loads of stuff to talk about. But my first question always on this show is, what the hell is going on for you right now? So paint, paint us a picture as detailed as you can of what life's like for you in Melbourne right now. Uh, oh my gosh. So, you know, um, do, you wanna, do you want me to keep it super real and honest and raw? Yeah, yeah. Super, super real on this show, please. <laughs> um, you know, I think a lot of people are struggling in this time. As you know, it's taken a massive hit on the recruitment industry to the point that everybody's just trying to survive, you know, um, and have a business to, to go back to. Um, so I think a lot of people have pivoted as for us, we, uh, you know, luckily enough, we're in tech and digital. So we had roles we could focus on in contracting and temp roles, but I would say 75% of our roles are on hold. Really? So all, all the, yeah, all the BDM roles, the marketing roles, the perm roles, I'm talking placements of like 20 to 40K. Um, we had six offers going out, all uh, taken off. Uh, you know, we had two candidates that had quit their job, was supposed to start the following week. Um, this is about a month ago now. Uh, everything's on hold. So we still don't know what's going on, to be, to be really honest with you. We're just kind of taking it day by day. We've had a few roles come in from like engineers and developers and things like that, but no perm roles. So it's completely, I would say probably 85% right now is contracting roles. So what we've done is obviously to survive this thing and thrive, um, we've actually created a, um, a LinkedIn optimization course, which is essentially offered to our clients. So uh, with, well, it basically came to us because we sat down with a client and uh, he was like, hey, would you be able to help myself and my team optimize my LinkedIn at scale? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, but I always see you on LinkedIn and your engagement is crazy. And I, you know, I want to get views like that. And we want to get engagement like that. Can you come out and teach our staff to scale and BB on LinkedIn. Like, how do you do it? Tell us how, like, how do you reach out? What are the templates you use? Uh, how do you create content? How do you think of topics um, on what to talk about? So I said, okay, let me come back to you. So uh, I went back with the team. We kind of figured out what we're going to charge, you know, for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And we figured out a price. It was three, four, nine, nine, $3,499 a month. And it's a 90 day transformation. So we uh, basically do one on one coaching or Zoom, Zoom coaching like this for an hour, three times a month. And we go through it with a team on how to, I guess, scale LinkedIn and how to BD on LinkedIn in the time of COVID. Um, and it's worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, we won Telstra quite recently recently as well, which is a, a previous client. So they actually reached out to us and seen LinkedIn and what we're doing on LinkedIn. Um, and he was like, Hey, I seen that you're, you're doing this thing. Can you help us out? And I was like, yeah, sure. Well, sounds not? exactly, that's, sounds that's exactly, just... sounds exactly what I'm doing on the, the Hoxo Academy that's gone live. Oh, really? LinkedIn? Are you doing LinkedIn? Yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty much where recruiters live, right? So oh my God. I didn't know that you're doing LinkedIn. I thought you're doing recruitment. So we're not, we're not focusing in recruitment world so no you're doing you're doing your clients i'm doing my clients right so my clients are recruitment owners like you and your clients are tech companies right so it's tech, yeah so tech startups yeah. uh, digital um digital agencies that kind of shebang right now i mean there'll never be a better time to invest in your brand if you think about it like it's it's we're all sat there but if you if i look at recruitment owners who are the audience that we're talking to today and i've spoke to so many that have gone from bigger agencies, like, you know, 50, 60 staff in their teams to in one week, they're down to like five. 
And some of these guys have been, or ladies have not been recruiting or especially doing BD for five years. And then they're like, well, what do I do now? I've got to do it, right? And I can't just sit here and push paper around because there is no paper to push. <laughs> I've got to get and win some jobs. I've got to fill some jobs. So yeah. it's so true. And, and so that's where the academy, we've been planning it for ages, but this was a bit like you. It forced us to say, well, you know, if we can get clients to optimize their LinkedIn, their social platforms, build content, engage customers, build a community, then, you know, then now's a good time. We're not charging anywhere near that level. We're charging a, a much lower price, but we're grouping people into into groups right so it's not one-on-one -on -one, it's one one to many in groups but um i just don't think the our audience have that kind of revenue to spend at the moment but um i love how much like you know people are pivoting and having to you, you're using the skills you've got right because you've been doing this stuff right. for a while look it's it's look i'll be honest with you it has obviously um got people questioning you know what we're doing as an agency as well well you know, but I've seen companies like in retail that were selling designer wear and pivoting into selling masks and sanitizers, you know, a completely different business, but they had to pivot. You've got to do something to thrive yeah. in this time or otherwise you're going to lose staff. You're not going to have a business to come back to. Um, I'm not saying that this is something we're going to do forever. It's probably an automated course will add to the website but it's not the core business. The core business is will always be recruitment um, and, you know, recruiting talent for our clients. But this is the time that we had no choice but to pivot and have cash flow coming in because if we don't make placements, we're not invoicing. So that was just something we, we had come up with. It was based on demand and we, we pivoted and it's working and yeah, we're selling it. So well, let's go back a bit, Belinda. Tell me, what was the life? What was life like for you in Australia before it got serious with with COVID? Like, what what were you, what was your daily oh life, my, agency? Oh my life? gosh! Um, yeah, so we we um we actually were aiming, I think, for our second biggest month on record. Um, this was before Formula One. I don't know if you know Formula One, F one, the the car racing. Of course, yeah. Of course. Yeah, F1. Yeah, so they have it here in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, and this was just before Formula One. I used so to live. Were... I used to live it in Albert Park, where the where the. Oh uh, no way! Yeah, I did. That's right. That's the first, right. I lived in Melbourne for two years, and my first six months was in the worst flat. Anyone's. This is totally off topic, but I lived in a. It was called Elizabeth Court. It was off Union Street stop on St Kilda, the big St Kilda Road, and then you get off and you walk to Albert Park, opposite yeah. the lake. Oh, wow. I bet this was so shit. This is when I just got a job in recruitment. Before, in fact, I was working in a, in Amy Park Stadium uh, where the Melbourne Rebels play and stuff. Doing, I was in the cafe in the day. That's the job I had while I was trying to get a recruitment job. And uh, anyway, lo totally off topic, but I'm going to tell you the story now. But this, this was the cold. Everyone says live in Australia. The weather's warm, right? Coldest winter of my life because there was no heating in this apartment at all. So it was like... This shitty little flat oh, opposite no. the lake, no heating. And my bedroom had no outside window. The window looked into my brother's room. So <laughs> I would go to bed at night and then he would switch his light on to go to the toilet and I would thought it was daylight. So I would be getting ready for work at like 4 a.m. And then he'd turn oh, his light back off yeah. and I'd go, oh shit, well, check my watch. And it wasn't even time. So now I, I know where the F1 track is. I, uh, and that is March time, isn't it? Every year. It's about March. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, around there. Then I can't. I can't recall the exact date, but I just remember it was Formula One. Yeah. And at that time, you know, I was about to celebrate, you know, like, you know, invited to the F1, like I was doing my hair, my makeup and, you know, getting ready for the outfit of the day, um, you know, second month on record. Uh, and then boom, got an email, uh, Formula One uh, had been cancelled. And I was like, oh my God what happened due to COVID we had to cancel formula one. And I was like, this has to be serious. Something's going on. So that um, day, you know, I just followed up on everyone just to kind of check in and what was happening. Cause I was like shocked. I was like, this is like real, this is a real thing. Coronavirus is actually a real thing. Right. Um, and uh, from there that week, we got a call from our biggest client, which is Quandu. Um, which is a, a, a sister company of Open Table, which is a restaurant yeah, app yeah. like Yelp. Yeah. Um, and they put all the roles on hold. And I think at that time there was 12 roles um, and they were recruiting heavily at that time. 
um, and we just placed two candidates, luckily just before the COVID. Um, and he was like, I'm just sorry, like we just don't know what's going on and we're just gonna have to put all the roles on hold. I was like, what? And then we got a call the next day. Just kept from coming, didn't it? Telstra, yeah, from Telstra saying, hey, you know, the engineers, we're just gonna have to chat in a week. And I was like, this is actually a real thing. And then the following day, our contracts got put on hold. Uh, and then the following day after that, uh, we got two candidate offers put on hold, cancelled, actually. Sorry, one was put on hold and one was cancelled. And then the following week, uh, we had the three other offers that we had going out uh, put on hold. And then the other two were cancelled, meaning that we had two candidates that had left their job that ended up not having a job to go to. So that was kind of like a real, real moment for me. And, you know, you can only imagine in my mind, I'm like, I don't have a business anymore. Mm. You know, how am I going to pay, pay, pay people? How am I going to survive? Uh, you know, we've got a, an office to pay. We've got things to pay. What are we going to do? So um, at that time I was shitting myself, but uh, fortunate enough that this has kind of happened because it made me focus on, you know, building this application and you know focusing on that journey as well um not that i'm stepping down from focus group at all it's definitely um a different journey and a different venture Let's talk us through that so you, you but, mentioned offline yeah you've got you, you're launching an app, an app as well so you've got your recruitment company you've got your, your linkedin advertising stuff supporting people with their pages and their growth but you've also got an app so tell oh God, so much going on you're busy, okay. i love it <laughs> Oh, recruitment is the core. I don't have like a bunch of shit happening. Recruitment is definitely the core thing here. But yeah, to answer your question, pre-COVID, um, it was the second biggest month on record and I was ready to celebrate and pop champagnes and have an amazing month, but none of that happened. <laughs> so um, yeah, so the app came along because I do a, a ton of content. As you know, you see my LinkedIn profile. And uh, video has really worked for us, you know, in candidate or submitting candidates in video format uh, and also creating content for our personal brands. So um, the idea just kind of came in a way of already doing it in our agency, but we just wanted a solution, an easier solution to create an app where we can get the candidate to upload the pitch video under a minute on the application. Um, and then that could be somehow be attached to our CRM, which is job adder. So uh, that's what I initially wanted it for, but obviously now we're going to grow it into a company. So basically think of LinkedIn Recruiter. Uh, it will be a headhunting tool where recruiters can go on the application and headhunt talent. They will have their contact details, the CV attached, the cover letter and a one minute video of that actual candidate. And obviously you could headhunt based on the keywords and whatever roles they have, but that's what we're essentially trying to, to create. I know there's a lot of people in the market doing similar things like Hire Me, uh, Goldie, Video My Job, uh, Audro does something similar to that, but they're more tailored to rec they're the agencies, agencies yeah, like they're for the agency. video. That's not what we're doing. It's just no. essentially a Seek, a LinkedIn, but with a, with a video. Okay, so it's a it's 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 a user generated video from the candidate themselves rather than it being led by an agency. Correct. Yeah, so it's it's so easy. You just upload your CV, you do the the one minute video. We teach you how to do the video. You upload it, and it will be there forever. So essentially, like a LinkedIn profile, but a video. Do you think? Do you not think LinkedIn are going to build all that into their platform in the next couple of years? Well, it's a, definitely a thought that came to my mind and it's definitely a thought that investors have said to me, what makes you think that seek.com or Indeed or LinkedIn won't just jump in and put a couple million and build this, you know, with what they already have. They've got the data, right? I definitely think they could do that. But based on what I'm trying to do is super millennial focused and it's a whole different focus. It's not a premium like an Adobe. Think of Canva and an Adobe. Yeah. Adobe. Be and a camp and camp essentially do the same thing, but Adobe is a premium service, whereas Canva is an everybody service. So yeah. I'm essentially trying to create an everybody service, like a cheaper model um, that's super user friendly and easier to use, rather than charging a premium type of model. Yeah, with their basic details. So I definitely think LinkedIn may build something like that eventually. 
but again, it's going to be at a premium price and it's not going to be the niche of what we're trying to build. Okay. Interesting. You've got so much going on and we've only got half an hour. So I'm I'm, I'm like, we could talk about so much stuff and I'm enjoying it. But Belinda, look, one thing about you, which I've noticed is you consistently putting out a positive message, right? Which I think I, I would say I'm trying to be similar, right? I'm, 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 I believe personally I'm in control of my own um, actions, my own behavior, my own words. I'm not in control of what's going on in the world. I can't control COVID-19. I can only control my day every day, right? And that's my mindset. But tell, talk us through you and what, what make, what, what, what's going through your head on a day to day right now to stay so positive? I mean, it's just, in the end, the way that I see it is that if I'm not positive, I'm not going to create a positive impact on the business or my clients or be able to survive. So I think, you know, we all definitely have our bad days. Like today I had a shitty day, you know, the Good. worst day I can only imagine. Um, but you still got to just show up and keep doing everything that you need to do, right? You still need to attend these podcasts. You still need to do your meetings. You still need to make those phone calls and do all these things to provide value. Um, and the way that I see it is everybody is super negative right now. Um, at least, you know, most people that I know, uh, and everybody's complaining and whining about the things that they don't have the things that are not happening for them right now in business or personal life. I mean, we can't control what you can't fucking control. Like you can't control the, the universe or the coronavirus. Like it's here to stay, right? You can't remove that. So, it's just about adapting to what is already here and just trying to pivot to what you can do and control things that you can control. So that's just kind of my, I guess, mentality right now is you can't control it B. So just don't worry about it. Keep moving forward, be positive and just pivot the things that you can do. What's and that's life just kind of- like, what's, what's Melbourne, how's Melbourne reacted to lockdown? What's life like over there right now? Um, I think Australia is pretty good compared to America. Like, I don't know what you've heard, but Aussies are doing okay. You know, we had, um, I think three days ago, we only had one person that was affected by coronavirus in the whole of Victoria. Oh, wow. So, you know, and Western Australia yesterday just opened up doors to some places and you're allowed to have up to 10 of ga- gatherings now in parks and beaches. Wow. So... I think Australia will slowly, slowly start to see, you know, things coming back, even for recruitment. um, Sorry, I didn't mention, even for recruitment, there are things that are slowly coming back as well. So uh, Monday, we had a a contact from a client um, that wanted to reopen a couple roles. So they're slowly kind of seeing like the the light to the end of the tunnel. And I think it's coming soon. You just got to be positive, right? Um, Yeah, I think we're we're obviously... 60 million people in a country the size of Victoria and you're 20 million in a or whatever 25 million in a country the size of Europe. Yeah. So I think you guys are geared, you guys are geared for, for better versions of isolation spreading out and more countryside the UK has been um, intense I mean we we're having like seven seven eight seven hundred to a thousand people die a day right now of COVID um, I think it's starting the, the news yesterday was that we are starting to see a flattening of the curve but the economy here is being hit so hard that there's pressure on the government now to open things back up. So I think I spoke about it on yesterday's episode of the podcast was, you know, we all, I, I'm totally not, a, not all for like just running back out there and all getting sick. But at the same time, I think within reason, we've got to try and protect the vulnerable and, and then, you know, keep our distance, but try to get back to some form of economic normality because otherwise you can have all the people dying, but you'll also have people's livelihoods ruined. And you'll have, you know, people losing their homes, their businesses, and could be mental health issues, suicides. All these things are going to just grow and grow. Mm. Like alcohol sales have gone up by 30% in this country in the last four weeks, which is insane, right? Because people I are. I just... a bottle of Pinot is like half an hour ago, so I know. <laughs> you, you wrote on my status last week, didn't you? About, I, 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 it sounds great, but I couldn't not drink a bottle of wine. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I on day, yeah. I'm on day 30 right now so i've done i've not drank i'm not it's 30 days hard at next level i don't know how you're doing that like you know my hat goes off to you because mm. 75 hard is like yeah. next level it's not even the, the alcohol it's the no cheat meals it's the two exercising it's the 10 10 pages of a book and it's the drinking two of them a day that i've got to get through 
But um, like last night, I forgot my water, and it was literally 11 o'clock at night. I had to drink like more than that amount of water in like 10 minutes to go before bed. And then I woke up about 20 times in the night. Um, but I, I, I've just got... Go on, what are you saying? You must feel good for it. Like, you yeah, feel great, right? I feel like, you know, a bit smug and it sounds a bit shitty, but like health-wise, this is the strongest I've, I think I've ever felt when the world is on the, on the back. But I, I also think, look, if I do get sick, if I walk down the street, I'm, I'm in the shops regularly buying food. And if I caught something, like my immune system has to be the best it could ever be right now. So by not drinking, by training, by eating good food, by exercising as much as I can, like it's only going to mean that if I got sick and I'm not, I'm not fucking immune. I'm gonna, it could, yeah. You, but then I saw a video today, one of our um, contacts in the, Matt Green, if you're listening, bloody hell, I, I felt so sad. Recruitment owner of a company called IDEX in Birmingham. Uh, put a video up on LinkedIn today, which was saying he's actually got COVID on, he's on day five and he was struggling to breathe and he was coughing on video. His face was like going purple and he was like, you know, he's, he's a healthy guy. He's not an old guy. So he's like, I'm going to be okay. I think, but I can see why this wipes people out if they're not young and healthy. So it's, you know, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. When it Sorry. hits people, when it hits people, you know, and, and, and when it, well, it could hit any of us. Right. Um, but I do think, yeah, from what I've heard about Australia, uh, you guys are in a much better shape than us, which is, which is look, I'm, I'm happy for everyone. Yeah, yeah, thank God for that, right? You know? Yeah. Are you um, still on lockdown at the minute? Can you, can you go out and exercise and that's about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing like, I'm trying to do at least six to, to eight kilometers a day of run in the morning mm. um, or in the evening, just because it kind of keeps me sane and, you know, healthy. Um, but hey, I wanted to ask you, um, what are your thoughts, you know, about branding right now for recruiters? Well, obviously, what the, the Hoxha Academy is all about that, right? But you say thoughts yeah. in terms of tips yeah, and advice? Like what you do. Mm. Well, well, I think right now... Yeah, just because, you know, I know, you know, I know this is your podcast and I know, you know, the reason why I'm asking is because, you know, I do a bunch of content, as you know, and a lot of recruiters uh, don't, I guess, understand why I do content at scale the way I do content. And a lot of them always question around... You know, how do you have time? To yeah, they do don't, the people don't realize how, actually. How do you, like, why are you even talking about this topic? It, it's irrelevant to recruitment. Uh, and I get messages all the time. Like, I don't understand your brand. Um, I had one of the biggest leaders in Australia. I'm not going to mention the name. One of the biggest leaders here in Australia. She's like the, the 15 richest uh, female here. Uh, she sold two recruitment agencies. Uh, and she had mentioned in a conversation with someone looking at the brand of focus and just was like this branding game and this whole thing of recruitment and branding will never work. I guarantee you in three years, when I look at these people making brand and like building content and doing videos online and trying to build a personal brand and all of these things, uh, that is never going to give you an ROI. Well, let me, let me, it never will. Let me, let me just, say. Uh, well, look, look, if you look, look, the yeah, whole brief. Though, like, we're in 2020. Like, we're in a digital fucking age. How Linda, do you not see that personal? The reason I started this business was because I, I feel like in 2016, I saw how the, not the recruitment industry, just how B2B, B2C engagements were changing and how people on Instagram and YouTube were growing huge audiences. That like, I saw a guy reaching like a million views on YouTube, and I was thinking, I'm still trying to phone 10 hiring managers before 10 o'clock and he's getting a million yeah. views on a video. And I was like, there's got to be something in this, right? This was back in 2016. And, and so I've been going at this every day for three years and, and I've got so much shit that people say, you know, early on, what is this guy doing? Like, fucking hell, what is he all about? But if I, the reason I did it is if I, when I went back to my recruitment days, the reason I think I was very good at it was more because I was more than a recruiter. When I spoke to people, I told them about my life. I told them about my girlfriends at the time, my parents up north, my fan, my hobbies, my interests. The fact I lived in Australia, I, I was very open about me and my life. And it always, I know I connected with my ca candidates and clients on a level that was beyond the job. Like they didn't just talk to me about recruitment. Like we'd have banter, we'd have fun. Some of them came to my wedding and stuff. So I've got, I was building relationships offline that were way more than just fucking recruitment. And I, and I think the best people have always done that, right? So when it comes to branding, it's about amplifying 
what you can do offline, online. And it's, you know, some of the things you talk about on the phone to candidates and clients aren't recruitment related, I hope. Because if you do, if you, if you just talk about recruitment, you're a fucking robot. No one, no one wants to talk about, do you know what I mean? But, but the shame is a lot of our industries, they promote that, you know, you, you've got to be super professional. But if, you, if I phone someone up today, uh, I've got a job to talk about. I phone someone up and I hammer them on the phone for an hour about a job. I ask them every question I can think of about the, their background, their experience, their skills, their, their salary expectations, their hiring manager's name. And I don't tell them a thing about me and my life and what I'm trying to do and why I'm doing it. I can guarantee I'm going to get less from that person than I would if I opened up because it's like a two-way two -way street. I oh, talk about, yeah. about you, we have a better relationship, whatever happens. And that's the same online. It's People are so quick to write a status about a job and you know, we're hiring, but that is not the, that is, that's only part of this whole journey. This is about connecting people. Good recruiters connect people for a living. That's all they do. They're, they're connectors, right? So connect online, connect with people, connect wider. And people who aren't doing this, are going to hate. They're going to write to you. They're going to message you. They're going to comment on your shit because it makes them feel inferior yeah. because they're not doing it. And I, I guarantee you now you could put, you could throw the camera away, smash the phone every day and still make a million dollars a year. Like I, I know you can, but in five years, if you spend yeah. an hour a day on video or half an hour a day on your videos and you still spend seven hours picking up the phone, you're going to be 10 times further than you would be offline. So oh, I don't, I don't think anyone enjoys cold calling. I don't think cold calling um, is, is fun to receive or to, 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 achieve, to, to do. I, I don't think it's dead, but I just think I look at my experience at Hoxo and the way we've put our stuff out there and we've been so consistent and it's paid off. People come to us every day. People engage with us every single day. People, people think marketing and they're like, oh, I've seen that guy on LinkedIn loads. Um, some people hate me for a bit and then they go, actually, let's find out what this guy even does. But to me, it's, if, if, if you look back at when we all started in recruitment, I don't know how long you've been in it, but I started 10 years ago. Two and years ago. Two? Right, well, I was yeah. 10 years ago, right? And you could not do the things you can do now. You couldn't do them. So you've come into yeah. the market at a time where all this stuff's there and you've gone, you know, I'm young, I get it, I'll do it, I'm confident. Most people started recruitment 10, 15, 20 years ago, you're up against. This wasn't around. So they've got so used to how it used to be that change frightens the fuck out of them. You frighten them. Where's you? You frighten them because you stand there looking all glamorous, yeah. talking on camera, and they're like, "Who's this bitch who's been around for two years?" But the reality yeah. is, that's literally the DMs. Like yeah. you know nothing. You've been in recruitment for two years, and you're talking like you're a recruitment guru. And it's so it's totally not what I'm trying to do. It's just I'm trying to build a brand, uh, and I've created so many opportunities yeah. from LinkedIn, like companies. Quandu, my biggest client, reached out to me on LinkedIn with it on a video that I posted. Literally, the first sentence was, every time I open my LinkedIn, all I see is you. We have to work with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I've had that. I've had that myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> the thing is, though, do you, know what, do, you know what, do you know why you're winning and why I think I'm, I've done well and why, and why other people can do well? is because you didn't, get, you didn't get that email after the first video, did you? That took a while to get something like that. Right, you don't just put one video up and get that. Oh email. yeah, no, it did. No, no, no. It took a while. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, what... I was like banging my head against the wall. Like, is this even? This is not even working. I'm not getting any yeah. ROI. I think six months it took me to actually yeah. build something. It will, and and you know what? It it takes time, but that's the difference. People who give up after one, two, three, four videos and they go off, oh, fuck it, I, I didn't get anything. There was no ROI. <laughs> They'll regret it. They'll regret it in the future. It's like the gym. You go and train four days a week. For one week, you ain't going to look any different. You train four days a week for three months, you're going to look drastically different. And it's the same thing, right? Um, okay. So to me, recruiters have been pushed into, owners have been forced into a place where they are, they're almost back on the tools. They haven't got big teams to rely on. They don't have big marketing functions and budgets. Right now, they have themselves. They have the nine hours a day or whatever they give it. They've got their LinkedIn profile, they've got the networks they've built, and they've got a voice that they can talk and, and knowledge in their head and they can share it. And that, if they can tap into that, they'll tap into a wider market than if they could just make 10 to 20 to 30 phone calls a day. But the beauty is it only takes half an hour a day or whatever to do it, and then you can crack on anyway. 
And if you're really clever, you can record it all in one day and release it over a month. Like there's so oh, many ways. To- that's, cool. that's what I do. Yeah, I change exactly. my jacket three times. I record it in a day or two days and then I do micro pieces over the 30 days. Mm. That's how you make content at scale. You don't need to like, <laughs> oh. you know. Or like me, you do a podcast every day and then you stress yourself out yeah. because you, I, <laughs> honestly, like at the minute I'm, I'm creating a podcast in the, and then at night my, my editor messages me going, Sean, you've not sent me the podcast. I'm like, oh, fuck. And then I'll do it and I'm half asleep um, and I'll make him an error and he'll spot the error. But twice this podcast has gone out at 6am in the morning and I've not edited it. So like something's gone wrong and you can hear me going, oh, don't worry, we'll edit that out or something. And I've had messages, oh, no. I've had messages <laughs> of people saying, Sean, you need to take that down. You, you fucked that up. Um, so everyone listening, everyone listening, I'm only human and daily episodes, you make mistakes. Um, but the beauty is, you know what? When... when we're all learning, right? I'm putting a course together and I'm training people on what I've learned. You're doing the same, but I'm still learning. So in three months, I'm going to have more knowledge to add back to those people that are starting today. Um, and I don't know, I'll be honest, I just enjoy it more as well. I think it's more fun. I think having a... Yeah, I think it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's totally fun. Content, creating content is so fun. And also creating, it's not just about creating content, but building an audience. And, you know, the thing that really makes me happy is receiving messages from people saying, thank you so much for your video. Thank you. Like you've changed my life based on what you said in this video, Um, you know, and meeting like awesome fucking people like David Meltzer, you know, like the Cardones, like crazy people, like, you know, speaking about how they're, you know, sustaining culture and how they're building talent. And it's not just, yes, some of it's not relevant to recruitment, but it's picking brains of billionaires and, you know, successful people that are far more successful than the people in our industry, um, understanding how they sustain such culture, you know, and that's super intriguing to me. So it's giving value back to the audience, but I guess it's not for everyone. Um, and obviously we need to be honest as well to, to those people. It's definitely not for everyone. And, You know, uh, if you post videos for six to 12 months and you're not getting any traction, then maybe you need to question, is it maybe yourself? Like, are you, you're probably not as good on on video or you're probably not as confident or it's just not your thing. Do written content. Do Exactly. That's my thing. I think content, I think content's for anyone. I just think video is, is not the only format and people push it. So it's an amazing form, but it's not the only form. Um, Belinda, I'm going to have to go. We've got, um, I've got. I'm sorry, but I've oh, run out of time. Damn, he's leaving the podcast. No, I'm kidding. I'm cutting you in half, but no, that was, I've really enjoyed it. I think we should catch up again soon. Let's have another episode, part two. Um, in fact, let's get you let's on for it. a full, let's do a full rag episode of you, your, the story of Belinda, how you've co- created Focus, why. Um, let's go into a bit more depth and I'd have a full hour episode, yeah? Would love to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you also, so much for having at the end of this, um, any, anyone who's listening who wants to reach out and ask you any questions about how you've done what you've done, are you open to that if I tag you on the post? Absolutely. Taking a photo Thanks. of the end as well. I'm, I'm doing a video on it. Awesome. Well, look, I'll take- <laughs> on Instagram. Um, no, definitely. Uh, so I follow me on Instagram. It's just at Belinda Agnew Original. Um, and I post all of my content on Instagram. I post daily stories um, as well, uh, everything to do in recruitment. I also have a YouTube channel, which is Belinda Agnew, um, and LinkedIn, again, which is Belinda Agnew. So go check me out uh, and DM me. Don't be shy. Be I'm nice. happy to be nice. chat with you. Um, be nice, <laughs> my, my listeners. Be nice. Um, but look, thanks so much. I'm sure people will reach out, and I'll, uh, I'll set, let's set up another chat very soon, okay? Um, guys, thanks so much for listening. Thank I hope you. you enjoyed another episode of The Rag. Um, I don't ask for any money to listen to this episode, but I do ask for you to do one thing, and that is share this podcast. So to a friend, a colleague, a boss, even a competitor, someone else who you think would benefit from this daily episode of news from around the world, please share it because together we're going to come out of this pandemic stronger. I'll be back again tomorrow with more information. In the meantime, stay safe. and I'll see you soon.